Project Management Insights, providing project managers with professional development in the interpersonal skills areas of leadership, team building and communication. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Project Management Insights. Today I want to talk about bias and I'm going to talk about bias in the context of how you operate around other people. So are you an authority pleaser? So do you only do what will make the authority figures happy? And we know who the authority figures are in your project. They are your project sponsor or your project control board. Do you put in estimates for your project budget? And this might be way back at the start when you're developing your business case. Do you put in the estimate that you know is going to have it approved, even if and even knowing that that's not what your project will really cost? Not a good thing you're already setting your project up for failure. Do you answer yes all the time because you think those authority figures want to hear yes and it's going to make your life easier if you say yes rather than saying what's really happening and sometimes The answer to the question might be, no, that's not going well. That's not where we're at. That's not what's really happening. Saying yes is a no to you as much as it's a yes to them. And it's a no to the team because you're not supporting the team in that space by being honest. Do you, I'm going to call it smooch, up to the authority figures on the project to gain their approval whilst treating the other members of the project team with disrespect and disregard? This is not a good thing because what you are doing is not supporting the team in a way that has them feel part of a team, has them feel as if you have their back. The authority figures might be there in the responsibility of decision-making, overall decision-making, and what is the real value in buddying up with them, only saying yes, giving them what they want, when, as I said, the reality is something very, very different. You're not only doing yourself a disservice, you are doing your whole project team a disservice. So being an authority pleaser is not a good thing for either you or your project. Let's have a look for a moment at why you might want to be an authority pleaser. Who in your life have you felt that you've needed to please in this way in order to be okay, to feel safe, to feel like you are going to be okay and not be mistreated, yelled at, screamed at, harmed, hurt, whatever it is. There's a reason why you have a bias towards only giving these people what they want. Have a look at it. might be worthwhile. What does it mean for you if you are simply a people pleaser? And by this, I mean those people in your team, as an example. So do you go along with those people who have the loudest voice so as not to upset them when, in truth, you disagree with them. This is people-pleasing at its utmost, and it's not valuable. Again, you 
are doing the whole team and yourself a disservice if you're doing this. Do you try very hard to keep the peace between those warring groups or teams or work streams in your project rather than allowing the conflict and negotiating an outcome? People pleasers tend again to want to keep the peace, want to keep things happy, want to ensure that things are moving along in an okay way without conflict because they are scared of conflict. Conflict in itself is a very positive and very good thing. Conflict in a team means that there's a place to negotiate from. If you have two people or two, two teams or two groups of teams that are at loggerheads and have opposing views, if you are able to work with those groups and allow them to both feel heard and acknowledged and understood and to be able to hear the other points of, points of view, the other group's points of view, the other person's point of view without emotion then there's a place to negotiate an outcome. So conflict is only a good thing. So consider, is it really valuable to be a people pleaser? Or is there a different way for you to handle it? Are you a you pleaser? <laughs> and I thought about what I was going to call this. Are you the person that is tough? and you hold your stance, you don't listen to others' opinions or ideas because you are always right. You know nobody else does. Are you someone that doesn't consider what's necessary to complete tasks or to solve problems because you know what's needed? Well, my question to you, if you're a you pleaser, is, is it true? Do you really know the right way to go about it? Are you really always right and the other person wrong? What if there was another way? What if those other people had valid ideas? What would it take for you to stop and listen? Stop and consider what those others have to say. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them. And it can create cohesion and trust in a team when you show those others and allow those others to see that you are considering what they have to say they will feel respected. They will feel as if what they say matters. And you might consider that's not necessary. And I would say that in a team environment, how other people feel is paramount to you getting what you want as an outcome. And isn't that ultimately the successful delivery of your project? So next time you notice yourself being an authority pleaser, a people pleaser, or a you pleaser, stop and take the time to consider why you are acting the way you are acting. And is it really valuable for both you and the team, your project as a whole? just question it. You might find that a slight shift in the way that you are, the way that you interact, the way that you act or react with both the stakeholders in your project and your project team will shift the way that your project is being delivered. And this is only a good thing in the long term because ultimately what you want is to have your project delivered successfully, on time, under budget, and to the scope that's agreed. 
Till next week. Thank you for listening to this Project Management Insights podcast. Be sure to visit projectmanagementinsight.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter or to receive updates on upcoming training.